Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. The hippie Pope has arrived on our shores, something that the left has been praying for. It's a nice message. Tell it to the Islamist Pope. Let's all love one another. Tell that to the Muslims who are burning churches to the ground and, and kidnapping Christian girls, Mr. Pope. Look. His speech was modified because of the great criticism he was receiving in advance. They rewrote the whole thing over the last couple of days. He watered it down. It's milk toast. It's vanilla. You know, what do you expect him to say? The real question is, why was he even here? Why was there a pope in my Congress? Have you ever seen this before in your lifetime? No. Why did you see it now? That's the main question. Because we have a communist, Leninist, socialist in the White House who reached out to this pope who espouses the same belief system. They're all, they're all hypocrites, period. This one is Pope Two-Face the Tenth. Write it down. Pope Two-Face the Tenth. So far as I know, there are no Vatican food stamps. He's telling me to give more to the poor. We've taken more immigrants than any other country on earth. We care for our poor better than any other country on earth. I'm sick of this garbage. I'm sick of being lectured to by these, these hypocrites, these liars. I don't care whether he's Two-Face the Tenth or uh, Hussein the First. I don't know of any Vatican food stamps. Buy one calzone, get two salamis free. Buy two calzones, get one mortadella free. I don't know of any Vatican food stamps with the Pope on the on a, on a picture of it. Look at the pic, Look at the definition of the word hypocrite. A person given to hypocrisy. What does that actually mean? What does it mean? A, a person given to hypocrisy. A child knows what it means. A hypocrite says one thing and does another. So he's telling you to open your doors to more immigrants when we take in more immigrants than any other country on earth. Then he's telling you to give more money to the poor when we have the largest welfare system imaginable. Fifty some odd percent of the people don't even work. What more does he want? How much does the Vatican give away, by the way? How many immigrants have they taken in? A person given to hypocrisy. Middle English hypocrite from Old French from Late Latin hypocrita. From Greek, oh, it comes from the word actor, to play a part to pretend, see hypocrisy. A person who pretends to be what he is not. Basically, actor. When you say hypocrite, it means actor. In other words, Obama, Bill Clinton, Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi, one of the richest women in the world, making believe she's washing the feet of the poor. Hypocrite. Dianne Feinstein lives in a mansion on Pacific Heights. More money than Midas. Always talking about the immigrant, how much they need. An actor. They're all actors. We can see through it. Okay, the face. Just a mask. Actor. So what do you want me to talk about? A person who professes beliefs and opinions that he or she does not hold in order to conceal his or her real feelings or motives. Hypocrite. Well, that would be Bill Gates, in my opinion. That would be Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerface. A man who wants illegal immigration so he can get cheaper labor, in my opinion. A person who professes beliefs and opinions that he or she does not hold in order to conceal his or her real feelings or motives. Dissembler, dissimulator, phony, pretender, beguiler, cheater, deceiver, trickster, slicker, cheat. Someone who leads you to believe something that is not true. Charmer, smoothie, smoothie, sweet talker, someone with an assured and ingratiating manner. Tartuffe, a hypocrite who pretends to religious piety. That's after a play by Moliere. Fraud, deceiver, pretender, charlatan, imposter, Pharisee, dissembler, tartuffe, pecksniff, holy willy, whited sepulcher, phony or phony. Okay, you got the picture? That's what a hypocrite is, an actor, a phony, a two-face. So look, I could play the Pope's speech, which we're going to do. I could read the tra transcript of the parrot if you want. What's he, what's he say here that you haven't heard a thousand times before? I mean, who has not heard this before? Take in more immigrants, you're a bad country, shame on you white people. Uh, what else did he say that was uh, of any note? What else did he say that we should remember that you haven't heard since the first grade when the nun slapped you on the, on the wrist with a ruler? Tell me what he said that's, that's unique. Nothing. The pews are emptying out because people don't believe in the, in, the, in the gospel anymore that they give after the molestation scandal in the church. So you need to fill it with people from the third world who don't, uh, don't even know about the molestation scandal. 
to put their poor boys into these churches. God knows what will happen to the boys. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that? All of a sudden, the molestation scandal went away because the left loves them. The left is one who made it a big deal. Now, all of a sudden, the left embraces them. The left finally found religion. It's wonderful. They've been seeking religion all their lives. Even, uh, what's his name, the rumpled, the rumpled stillskin of the uh, presidential race, the one with the, the, I don't remember, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, the rumpled stillskin of the presidential race. Even he, a non-observant Jew, even the non-observant Jew, Bernie Sanders, fell in love with the Pope. Why? Not because he's become a Catholic all of a sudden, but because he's espousing the same left-wing Marxism, period, end of story. 855-400-7282. I'm not going to play the Pope's speech and ridicule his Italian accent. That would be too easy. And uh, I'm not going to ridicule accents. That, that, that I'm not going to do. I'm uh, going to play some of the Pope. I think we need to start with clip three so you get a flavor of the Pope as he actually spoke today for the first time in history, a religious leader. So far as I know, a Pope's never addressed a joint session of Congress. And the only reason he was invited to do so is because he was a politician. He was not a religious leader. But a politician in a bad suit. That's all. Wearing a yarmulke. Listen to this. Go ahead. This Congress have an important role to play. Now is the time for courageous action and strategies. I'm at implementing a culture of care and an integrated approach to combating poverty. Come on, so get off your high horse. Are there any Vatican food stamps I don't know about? With a picture of him on the food stamp? Buy one calzone and get two slices of pizza free with a, with a Vatican food stamp? Are you kidding me? We've taken more immigrants. We've taken more immigrants than the rest of the world. Did you know that? Did you know that? The United States takes in more people every year legally than the rest of the world combined. He said, you start the from that the premise. It was 1.7 million last year. You want to add the millions that came in without uh, legal papers? How many will be enough? 100 million? Now, the Vatican, by the way, is very fair. It welcomes millions of visitors a year. Uh, but there's only 800 residents in the entire Vatican, which is a, a state unto itself. Did you know that? Only about 450 of the Vatican's 800 or so residents actually hold citizenship. Oh, yeah. Very difficult to become a Vatican citizen. I wouldn't mind becoming a member of the Vatican. I don't think there's any taxes there, frankly. I could do the radio show. They give me a nice room, an ISDN hookup, pay no state, no federal, no world tax. It's a good deal. Put on the robe, and that's it. I'm all set. I can adopt the accent, and I'm done. The food's better. So, yeah, he talks about abortion, and he doesn't talk about the murderers on death row. He says we should release them, basically. The whole thing is hypocrisy. The Pope and parroting Pelosi. Leftist Catholics like Nancy Pelosi can also be thought of as Sinos, Catholics in name only. You know, they take one from column A, two from column B approach to their supposed Catholic faith, which shows a devotion more to party and ideology than to the church. He is the Pope of the Democrat Party. In the past, the faithful could point to a strong church as a rebuttal to the misguided policies that Madame Pelosi and her ilk were pushing. But in this Pope, Pelosi and leftists have not only a willing ally, but even something more dangerous, an instrument of God on earth willing to parrot the left-wing party line, who I call Lenin's Pope. So Pope Francis stood before Congress today at the invitation of Pelosi's willing dupe, John Boehner, who broke into tears, by the way, during the speech. What's with that guy? For years, he's been wearing pink shirts and pink ties. He breaks into tears at the drop of a hat. What's he on? What is he eating or drinking? What kind of water do they have in Cleveland? Why is he a weep job? What a weeper. So he starts to cry, Boehner. And then the Pope proceeds to validate the agenda of the far left that the far left has been trying to jam down our throats for decades. And the shock here is that this agenda now comes from the mouth of a man revered not only by millions of Americans, but people worldwide. 
who hear his message that America is no good. That we have to change our nation. We have to get rid of the building blocks that made the country great. We have to be ashamed of white people. Well, my friends, I think this is one of the lowest days in the history of America to have such an insult laid upon us by, the, the, by this pope, Pope Two-Face the Tenth. And I really don't have to say any more about it, you know. I can refer you to uh, a couple of books. Yes, I'll talk about my book later, but you know, there's a book written years ago called The True Believer by Eric Hoffer. He's been forgotten. He was a very, very important longshoreman who became a writer. And he understood more than anybody the nature of mass movements. I remember reading it in college. He was once very popular in San Francisco until they realized that although he was a laborer himself, they themselves suddenly turned on Eric Hoffer because he saw right through them that their left-wing movement was part of the same mass movements he was talking about. And uh, that book's a good one for you to look at. I'm not going to read from it. I think it would be a little boring for me to read it to you. But again, don't forget what I said, the true believer. A startling analysis of the nature of mass movements. The Pope's mass movement is dying on the vine amongst the educated white people. I mean, look, let's level with each other. Educated white people are moving away from the church, at least those church teachings. So where are they going to get new, uh, a new audience? They have to get it from people who are less educated, from the third world, who are more fearful and uh, more, more faith, let's say. That's all. It's business. I'm nothing against it. But the thing is, is why are they using my Congress to push the business of the Catholic Church? Why? Because the agenda is that of ra a radical Obama. Radlib Obama, that's all. So, uh, look, I've said it all with my chapter in Government Zero, Lenin's Pope. And by the way, thanks for flooding to Amazon. The book moved up to number two or three or four, and it's not published for another month. The Washington Times wrote an incredible review, a pre-review of the book in advance. They say more to come later. But I really want you to look at that chapter when it comes out. Zero religion, and I call him Lenin's Pope. And I hope it sticks, because he has politicized the papacy, or is it the papacy, or is it the popacy. All I know is that he channeled Lenin. He channeled Lenin almost as soon as he was appointed. And by every objective measure, he is Lenin's Pope. He has taken the power of religious authority, and he has fundamentally turned it over to uh, socialism to be very polite about it. The Pope wields a third kind of power, the power to influence ideas. Millions of honest Catholics look to the Pope for guidance on how to live a good life, a good Christian life. Now, when he's guiding people on how to emulate Jesus in their personal lives, he is a tremendous force for good in the world. But when he's acting as a political operative, he's just the opposite. And besides, with all due respect, he doesn't know what he's talking about. See, it's a little bit like medicine. The United States has the greatest doctors in the world when it comes to diagnosing and treating acute illnesses. That's what they're trained to do. And no system trained them better than America's former free market healthcare industry. If you get a serious illness and the most effective treatment in medicine or surgery, there's nowhere on earth you're in better hands than with an American medical doctor, at least for now. However, medical doctors are not experts in all things. They're not experts in nutrition or wellness, or in preventing you from getting sick and needing their help. Medical doctors can tell you exactly what is going on with your body and can suggest medical solutions. But as far as living a healthier life when you're not sick, they're little more than very intelligent people. When they're giving you the same nutritional or fitness advice as Michelle Obama, you may want to do some research on your own. The same goes for the Pope. He doesn't hold a degree in economics. He's never even run a business. He never ran a calzone stand in Rome. And yet he came here to lecture us on business. You hear this? Came here and lectured businessmen on business. The man never ran a calzone stand. Never. And I'll remind you of something else. And it's not a, a, a bad thing to have been a bouncer. He began as a bouncer in a bar in Argentina. You say, well, th does that disqualify him? No, people change. But look how far he's gotten by being such a wise politician. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not going to sit here and bash the Pope because I know what's going to happen. The Catholics are going to accuse me of being an anti-Catholic, which I'm not. I'm not going to defend that because I'm not. 